When a patient with severe restless leg syndrome comes to see me, one of the questions they always ask is, methadone versus buprenorphine, who wins? I'm Dr. Andy Burkowski of Relax Health, and today's topic are the long-acting opioids that are commonly used for restless leg syndrome. Opioids are in the 2024 clinical practice guidelines by the American Academy of Sleep Medicine are considered a conditionally recommended treatment, generally for moderate to severe restless leg syndrome. When people have failed other first-line treatments, mostly in those with augmentation from dopamine agonists, which are no longer recommended in the treatment of restless leg syndrome. Now, methadone is one of the most commonly used opioids, but buprenorphine uh, is becoming more popular uh, with time. So what are the similarities and differences between these drugs? Let's talk about 12 key features. Number one, risk of death. That's kind of a big deal, risk of death. Methadone is a full agonist opioid, which means that when one brain cell is talking to another brain cell, it sends a messenger and that messenger attaches to the other side of the brain cell and generates a signal. Methadone and most other opioids like oxycodone or hydrocodone are considered full agonists. They attach and they fully stimulate the receptor in the brain. Buprenorphine, on the other hand, is what's known as a partial agonist, but it has a unique chemical property that allows it to have limited effects on the brain that most of the other opioids don't have. One of them is that there are opioid receptors on the brain stem, which is the part of the brain that controls breathing, particularly when one is sleeping. If methadone and other opioids are taken at very high doses, it could actually cause the breathing centers of the brain to slow down and breathing could stop completely. That's the main cause of opioid-related deaths, which is really common right now in the US from drugs like fentanyl, is that it slows the breathing down until the point that it stops. Buprenorphine has what's called a ceiling effect, that it might affect the breathing just a little bit at first, but if you go to higher and higher doses of buprenorphine, it does not impact breathing. So individuals can often uh, take a lot of buprenorphine and it will not detrimentally affect their breathing. So it's a much safer drug, particularly at higher doses. So for this, for this region, uh, the winner is buprenorphine. Number two, we just touched on it, it's the effect on breathing. Both of these drugs, methadone and buprenorphine, can slow breathing down a little bit, particularly when one is sleeping. They can cause what's called central sleep apnea, which are these slowing down and pausing of breathing because of the effects on the breathing centers of the brain. Once again, methadone has a much stronger negative effect on breathing than buprenorphine. And in fact, I've switched many patients from other opioids over to buprenorphine and it has improved their central sleep apnea on uh, their device that they're using to help breathe or in sleep studies. Unfortunately, neither drug has been studied at very low doses as in the case of restless leg syndrome. So the true prevalence of this phenomenon is not known, but buprenorphine has the advantage here. Number three, effectiveness. Well, this is essentially a tie. Both methadone and buprenorphine are extremely effective. No, there are no randomized controlled trials of both drugs. There is some indirect evidence that has been published on methadone. And my group has published an abstract on buprenorphine with the full publication coming out hopefully sometime in the future. Both of these drugs are long acting opioids. That means they go in slowly and they come out slowly, create a very steady effect at very low doses and are better tolerated than the shorter acting opioids that seem to have a big jump in the effect and then they're out of your system very quickly. So both of these drugs are highly effective in restless leg syndrome and many people can take them once, sometimes twice during the day and have lasting effect throughout the night and possibly into the next day, whether it's in a car ride or on that airplane, it will still sustain the effect because it lasts a long time in the system. Number four, ease of use. Methadone is the winner here. Methadone comes in a tablet that can be swallowed and at lower doses, it can come in an oral solution 
where very finite doses can be taken. Buprenorphine, on the other hand, cannot be swallowed or it's not absorbed and destroyed by the stomach. So it either has to come in through a different route, usually by dissolving in the mouth or going through the skin. So the buprenorphine patch, easy to use. You slap it on, wear it for a week, and it's given into the body 24 seven. So that's fairly easy, but the films and tablets that dissolve in the mouth are a little trickier and a little more inconvenient. And therefore methadone is the big winner here with just a pill that can be swallowed. Number five, the risk of an irregular heartbeat. So one of the concerns about methadone is that it can affect heart conduction very slightly, mostly at much higher doses than are used for restless leg syndrome, but it can have effect. This is called the QT interval, which is not important to remember, but this is something that can be measured on an electrocardiogram that's done in a doctor's office. Methadone has a much stronger effect on the QT interval than buprenorphine, so it might be useful to have an EKG, ECG, prior to starting on methadone and be used with caution with other drugs that can slow down heart conduction. But most of the time for restless leg syndrome, this is not a, an issue with either of these drugs. Number six, cost. So methadone is an old, cheap, generic drug. It really is quite affordable even without insurance coverage. Buprenorphine has different tiers and different formulations with some of the lower cost ones being the, the Suboxone brand film or tablet all the way to the patch and the buckle film called Belbuca, which are more and more expensive, less and less covered by insurance. So the winner here is methadone by quite a bit. Number seven, availability and accessibility. Well, what's the difference? Well, both drugs are available. Uh, methadone occasionally has shortages of the oral solution. Buprenorphine, particularly the brand name forms of buprenorphine, sometimes come out of stock and you may have to go to a different pharmacy to find them, but they're generally quite available. But what about accessible? Accessible means can you actually get it from a doctor? That's the tricky part with both of these drugs is that for one thing, doctors don't want to prescribe opioids. However, methadone is a lot harder to prescribe than buprenorphine because it's more highly regulated by the DEA. It's a schedule two opioid. That means you have to, in some states, see an individual in person. You gotta see your doctor in person to get methadone and buprenorphine can be given exclusively through telemedicine care and refills can be given, 90 day prescriptions can be given. Therefore, buprenorphine is the winner here as it is more accessible. Number eight, the risk of induced opioid withdrawal. So this is kind of a tricky thing here, but if someone is already on an opioid and they start taking methadone, methadone just swaps out for the other opioid, no problem. But buprenorphine, because of its unique binding mechanism, can actually knock out the old opioid and precipitate an opioid withdrawal for some time. And that can be rather scary and unpleasant. So most drugs that are opioids have to be washed out for a while and the system has to be cleared of opioids before buprenorphine can be started. So sometimes it can be a hassle to start buprenorphine. Methadone is the winner here. Number nine, chemical dependence. Chemical dependence means an individual starts taking the drug and they take it every day and their brain gets chemically dependent on it, meaning they'll go through withdrawal if they don't have it. This can happen with all opioids. It tends to happen less on these low doses for restless leg syndrome. But buprenorphine has, due to its partial binding to the receptor, is actually less likely to cause dependence than methadone and certainly much less than other drugs like your oxycodone or hydrocodone. And there's another chemical pathway in the brain that kind of reduces that dependence feeling of, of withdrawal and some of the sensations one would get for withdrawal. And that also has advantageous properties that help with buprenorphine. So buprenorphine is the winner on chemical dependence. Number 10, constipation. 
Well, it took me a long time to get this one out. I wanted to talk about it sooner, no pun intended. But constipation is an issue with all opioids. It is less, slightly less of an issue with buprenorphine. Buprenorphine blocks a receptor called the delta opioid receptor, and that has some presence in the bowels. And so buprenorphine may cause the bowels to slow down a little bit less than a drug like methadone that's more of a standard opioid. But all opioids can have negative effects on the bowels and cause them to slow down. Number 11, lack of euphoria. Euphoria is that getting high that causes people to develop uh, a use disorder or, or concerns about developing an opioid use disorder. Methadone and buprenorphine as long-acting opioids that don't have, cause a surge in the system are, tend to cause less euphoria. So overall, both of these drugs are much better than short-acting opioids. But buprenorphine has other chemical properties on these opioid receptors that really prevent that from happening and produce a stronger effect on preventing people from getting high. So people aren't that interested in the non-medical effects of the buprenorphine compared to methadone. But again, methadone is still better than other short-acting opioids. And lastly, number 12, pronunciation. Methadone. Pretty easy to pronounce. Buprenorphine kind of rhymes with morphine. Nobody can pronounce it. It's a loser there. That's why most people talk about it based on its brand names. So methadone wins in that. So when we look at all 12 categories, the question is who wins? Well, in my view, it's buprenorphine, but not by much. And methadone is a close second. As always, these videos are for general medical information only. They do not constitute the practice of medicine or the giving of medical advice. Decisions on treatment should be made under the medical supervision of a licensed professional. And as always, one of the keys to sleeping well is to relax.